Welcome to the JBK Show. It's not every day you get to speak to the best tennis player in Australia, Nick Kyrgios. Thank you for jumping on, brother. Appreciate it, boys, any time. Mate, thank you for hosting us down in Canberra. It's actually, you know, it's a beautiful place. Great place. It gets a bad rap. Everyone says, you know, there's more enough to do here. We were at Assembly last night. People's Quite, Pub? Great pub. One of the best pubs. Look, I've told people this for the last 10 years. Canberra's a place to be. It's nice and quiet. I actually like when people talk shit about it because then they don't come here. It's quiet, less <laughs> yeah. people. Less people from Sydney, you know. So. Less yeah. heads. Yeah. Less exactly heads, right. yeah, definitely less levers. Big problem in Sydney. <laughs> yeah. Now, mate, Australian Open, around the corner. How's the body feeling? I know you're coming off an ankle injury. How, how your, how's your body feeling? Yeah, no, I feel good. Um, you know, the tennis season's so long. It's, you know, there's no off season. It's probably one of the only sports where you kind of just got to sacrifice weeks in, weeks out to just get your body right. But yeah, look, coming into the Aussie summer again, you know, pretty excited. You know, carrying that Aussie flag and hopefully going to do some big things for sure. Now, everyone's wanting you to defend your doubles championship with mm. Cock. Is that going to happen in this Australian Open? Yeah, we're going to give it a go. Uh, we've entered and, you know, me and Cock, we, we don't have any tactics. We don't have anything like that. We just kind of rock up, you know, and we just, we have fun. We get the crowd involved and that's it. Just kind of happened literally. You know, Which we, definitely stirs the other players. Oh, yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah. Like those doubles guys practicing for hours, you know, all their patterns and stuff means and I was kind of rocked up. You know, he was just in electric, you know, rock, <laughs> rock, rock, that, rock, rocked in from electric. Um, and, you know, we just, we just got it done somehow. So it's pretty crazy. Well, listen, if you get no altercation in the, in the dressing rooms, we're going to be in Melbourne yeah, in we'll that first week. If you need, to, I'm saying if you need backup. Well, judging from the size of your arm. Yeah, <laughs> if you need backup, I'll definitely, I'll definitely we're going to be there. Do you, um, do you enjoy playing doubles more, but? Yeah, I mean, look, I, I love basketball. Grew up playing basketball. So having that team environment, for sure. Me and Thanasi get along so well. It's like, you know, you guys have that connection. It's what me and Thanasi do. We've grown up since we're about eight years old together. So, no, nah, for sure. We, we, we have that chemistry that the other doubles guys don't really have. You, you grew up playing basketball. you got a crew down in Sydney. I, I want to shout them out because... We actually played one time at the uh, takeover at, at the take the park takeover, and you absolutely embarrassed me. I, you scored a fade away on me. You swatted the shit out of me. Uh, you did. Yeah, you 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 got my number. Yeah, and you went out there. You did what you had to do. But what's how's basketball prepare you for the, for the tennis court? Like you, you obviously got a group of boys. You go out. Is it good fitness for you? Yeah, for sure. I feel like, you know, the, the movement on tennis, like, is exactly how it is basketball. The defensive, the defensive slides, all that type of stuff translates to the movement on the tennis court. People don't really realize that so much. But for me, it's more just like my meditation. You know, when I'm out playing basketball, I don't think about anything, what I've got going on in my life, like tennis, relationship, family, any, any type of problems I have. It kind of just wipes it away when I'm playing basketball. So, you know, I'm physically getting the fitness out of it, but then I'm mentally having that, you know, for instance, someone might want to play computer games with me, that's basketball, I just play, you know, with Brefo, you know, all those boys, you know, they've yeah. taken me in like one of their own and, and we just hang out and play every day. So they've helped me immensely, like all 2022, I've got to thank them for, you know, they compete against me, they push me and, you know, they've, they've made my fitness pretty high as well. That's unreal, that's unreal. And in terms of the Australian Open, now everyone, every Aussie, even if you're not that big of a tennis fan, mm. is always tuned into the Aussie Open. What sets it apart from other tournaments overseas like what makes it the best grand slam um yeah i think i think the the way the tournament looks after the players is insane but i think aussies just get the loosest like you look at wimbledon um two prim and proper yeah it's it's i mean it's a it's my probably the biggest biggest tournament out there but like for instance you know that girl who screamed out to me in the final ended up having a court case or something so it's <laughs> crazy but in in australia it's like you know you get people just screaming out you they know, welcome you, it a bit more. exactly yeah. Yeah, everyone's loose everyone just I think ever since that COVID where, you know, the Melbournians were kind of locked away for so long and then they just came out to watch Australian Open. Everyone's getting a bit looser now and the energy is just different. I feel like every kind of international player loves the Oz Open as well. Except Medvedev. Yeah. yeah. Medvedev. He, kind of, he hated it. He hated it. <laughs> well, tough. I mean, it, it's like, this is probably the first tennis tournament. I mean, the Oz Open last year was straight in a bit of controversy yeah. with Novak yeah. obviously being deported. Yeah. Right? And now, you know, he wasn't even allowed to play in the US Open. Is there, is it, do you think he's on a, a bit of a redemption run, Ovek? Yeah, it was probably the worst thing tennis could have done to him because now he's just hungry. Every event he's playing, he, doesn't, he, he knows that he might not be able to play the next week, so he's going to do everything he can to win that tournament. He's almost harder to beat now. So, yeah, look, I mean, for tennis, we need him there. Like, you just see Roger retiring. It's like, these guys aren't going to be there forever. And what they do for the sport is so, in, like, so important. So, look, I'm just glad he's here. And, you know, as a competitor as well, you want the best people there playing. Like, and, how, and you guys... 
are, are probably good mates now. Is, is that like it gets drummed up a little bit? Your bromance, yeah, and, you yeah, know, yeah, you play into course. it a bit. On yeah, stuff. Bloody are you guys good mates? You, t- you chat? Yeah, yeah, we chat. We chat a lot now. But I think like you know, when it all said and done, like in, at the end of the day, if you defend someone, you know, in real life situations where you know you're expecting people to stand up for you, no one else did but me. And now he was probably thinking, there's no chance that Kyrgios is like yeah. actually. Especially because you guys had a bit of a rough. That's past. right. And I'm like, no one deserves to be treated like that, whether you're a tennis player or not, from another country. So. Um, yeah, but we're playing doubles in, in Indian Wells after Australian Open, so it's a big tournament, so that'll be, that'll be pretty cool. Have you, you haven't played doubles with him before? Never played doubles before, but I don't think any Grand Slam finalists who verse each other have ever kind of yeah, just decided right. to play doubles like the week after as well, so you know, it's going to be good. It's like, like Hulk Hogan and Rick Flair getting together. Yeah. You know, like two <laughs> singles I'll championships. Be, I'll be betting on any match you guys play. Yeah, yeah, you guys will be yeah. taking a W. But who do you think is going to be, the, not the standout of the Oz Open, but like you get your Nadal's have a wrap, Mm. You know, everyone's at Novak's a short price favorite this yep. Oz Open. But are there, there's anyone that you feel is a bit underrated that flies under the radar? Doesn't, like, doesn't get the respect he deserves. Yeah. Mm. Um, look, I think <clears throat> the West, where the tennis is at the moment, it's so deep. Like, I feel like the guys in the top 50 are, so, are capable of doing anything that week. You know, there's so many players that people never heard of with tennis. That's the thing. They don't get the right, they don't get any social media kind of attention. They don't get any hype, as you said. But there's so many people who can do, you know, damage. There's so many Aussies right now. Like, Demon we had a great win over Nadal the other night. Mm-hmm. You know, he's always dangerous at home. People like Thanasi, like, if they get a good draw, stars align, like, it could be a break open week for, for anyone. But, look, I'll, I'll back myself to, to do good things, but there's so many players out there that are capable, for sure. Because even, like, younger players like Alcaraz, yeah. Yannick Sinner, like, they're starting to make massive waves in tennis. Like, yeah. do you expect them to have big tournaments and even, like, push Nadal and, you know, Djokovic off their platform? Definitely. Like, I feel guys like Sina, Alcaraz, like you said, they're so hungry. Like, I'm looking at these next-gen guys, like, they're physically amazing. They're extremely professional. The dedication, the hunger. It's like, what are they feeding these fucking kids? Like, <laughs> these, these guys are animals. Well, man. because, like, would you, would you even want to verse them? Or even, like, because Nadal, he's getting up there in age. I feel like I'd be more scared to verse Yannick Sinner than I would be to verse Nadal, strictly because Sinner's going to be running all over the court. Yeah. It's going to be a longer match, probably. Yeah, look, like, these guys are animals. I mean, the thing about it is experience just, you can't, you can't buy experience. You just have to live it. And I just experienced that at, at Wimbledon when I lost to Novak. It's like, I'd rather play any of those guys, to be honest. But these older guys just say, just have that experience of, you know, being there 30 times over and over again and, and just getting it done. And Novak is the Terminator. He like, is the Terminator. He's, he's unbelievable. Stuff. No, he's insane. But each... I think big tournament, whether it's Wimbledon, Oz Open, there's always something that's drummed up in the media. Yep. You know, whether it's you at a press conference eating sushi, yep. if you wearing red Jordans out on the court. Yeah. And I think people enjoy that about you, or they either love you or they hate you. Do you know when you do something, say it's in a press conference, that as soon as you leave, that's gonna be that's gonna be picked up in the media, or do you just you be yourself, and then if it's picked up, it's picked up. No, I joke about this all the time. Like, tennis has given me the power to be, like, in the media whenever I want. Like, I could go on Twitter right now, for instance, and just write five words that might be controversial. It's going to be all over nine news tonight. Like, they've, given, of power, of they've given me that, that power now. It's simply, But I haven't changed. Anyone that knows me, I'm the same person from 10 to 28, 27 right now. So, But, yeah, like, if I'm in a press conference, I know that all these journalists, like, how they're they going to make their money. Like, I know if I give them a little, like, nutshell to you know, go spread, they're going to make more money. So I know how much power I do hold. You're actually giving back. Exactly. Like, I feel like, <laughs> like they all look ridiculous because they're like, oh, he's bad for the game. He's disrespectful. Like, he, he, there's no place from here yet. I'm going to be starring in a Netflix documentary, making them more money. It's just like, it's just so contradictory. Yeah, you, what else would you write about? Exactly. You know what I mean? You, so. you enjoy spicing them up, but like... He, yeah, for sure. I love throwing yeah. them back in their face a bit, yeah. Like, yeah. like I go on Facebook just for like for gags and just go through my phone feed and then just like copy and paste this article <laughs> and just write what actually is happening in the article. <laughs> well, because even like the the new Kamerdo one, we just screenshotted the article yeah. and then wrote, yeah. Yeah, "This is yeah. all bullshit." Yeah, and, and it's like thirty articles written. Yeah, on that. yeah. And then exactly. straight away, it's like bang, they're just yeah. jumping on it and they yeah. want to kill you. It's a, it's it's a yeah, it's an unnecessary amount of power for one person with the media for sure. Well, an, an Instagram story of yours probably gets more viewership than Channel 9's mainstream yeah. views. Well, definitely the project. Yeah, right. definitely the project. Yeah. Yeah. So That's not a job at the project. The project. <laughs> I, love uh, it. I hate the fucking project. <laughs> that, but it, to be fair, I read that you are, you know, you're for on-court behaviour fines, mm-hmm. whatever it be, you are the highest in, t- in terms of fine earners. ATP history. You're in ATP history, leading, you're leading. You're leading. You've probably been fined over hundreds of thousands in your career. Do you even yeah. care now when, when you get given a fine? Well, I'm not thinking about it, but I got told it goes to charity. 
So as soon as they told me that, I was just trigger happy. I was just <laughs> snapping <laughs> sticks it. Because you donate to charity anyways, you may as well have a bit of fun. Yeah, but it. like, you know, when I'm out there, it's, it's crazy because tennis, like, I'm, it's, it's unfair in a way because a match can go for four hours. Like at the US Open that recently passed, I played a match, went for four hours, and then the media showed the last 30 seconds of me smashing a racket. And then that's what they choose to put out on, you know, globally. It's like, well, what happened to the other four hour segment where I was trying my nuts off at four, like 2 a.m. in the morning, playing for hundreds of thousands of dollars, they just choose to show where I'm getting frustrated. Well, they did that at the Wimbledon game as well. Exactly. You kind of walked so off and straight to the dressing room. It's hard. Like, people just assume... It gets, to the, it gets so crazy. Like, people on the street think I'm just, like, the craziest guy ever. They'll just look at me and wait for me to do something insane. I'm like, I'm literally just a normal bloke. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah look, yeah. the media's definitely painted a bit of a picture. Well, I mean, you have such a big social media presence as well. You know, you're over 3 million, 3 million followers on Instagram. What You said, you know, you can put a tweet out. You can go viral like that. What, what social media do you find that you use the most? Because you're very prominent on Instagram. Do you, do you bounce between that, Twitter? You're, not, you're probably not on TikTok. No, I'm not. I don't have Snapchat or TikTok. You know, I know that can naughty, be a bit dangerous. I know naughty things happen on those yeah. applications. <laughs> and I can tell from both of your faces that yeah, you, you, love, you love those <laughs> two away. platforms. But no, I'm on, I'm on Instagram mainly. You know, I've had the same Instagram account since I was 10 years old. I have the same, like I put it as King Kyrgios when I was 10 years old with the same thing and I haven't changed it since. So that's pretty cool. Like, just to see how far I have come. You know, it's all been kind of self-made myself. I don't have a PR agent doing anything of that. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Where do you find that you get the most negativity? Because there's a, there's a lot, like with the platforms, if you're, if you're on all of them, I find that like, there's more anonymous people on TikTok. Instagram, a lot of fake accounts. Insta you know. Yeah, and then, and then Facebook can be maybe that older demographic. Where do you find that you cop the most heat on? Fuck, it's pretty much everywhere, man. Like, for me, it's hard because I always, I haven't always had thick skin. So, like, I wake up and it's, like, so accessible. You know, I go on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, just seeing negative comments after negative comments. Not about me, my family, yeah. my girlfriend. And, like, even though you're not taking it personally, like, subconsciously, it's going into my head. So, it's, like, it's, lot, it's a lot of shit to deal Especially with. Especially when you've been copping it since you're, like, 18, 19 exactly. years old. You're like, just a kid. You I don't know. know any better. And it's kind of put a, it's put a massive chip on my shoulder. Like, and it's just impossible for me to just warm up to people now. Like, I will just mm. have my walls up until, you know, I feel comfortable. But we'll get to know them at least. We're talking about that. Girlfriend. Constance. Okay. Constance. 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 Now we're doing her up. We're doing her up. <laughs> we love you, Constance. <laughs> that, but, I mean... You, you've been going out for almost over a year now. Yeah. The stories, been showing, you know, I think you maybe J up the media a little bit, put the ring on there, then there's an article, oh, when's he going to propose? I, I don't know, what's the, what's the relationship like? Because, I mean, she, not that she's transformed your tennis, but you've obviously been playing a bit more consistent brand yep. of tennis. Yeah. She's been travelling with your heaps. How, what impact has she had on your tennis? No, I think with anything, if you find that, you know, partner that's, you know, just enjoying your general life with, like, for instance, I'll come into the hotel room wherever we are around the world or, you know, we have a place in Sydney now. Like, I generally feel as if she, you know, she cares for my best interest. Everything's just easy and she just, she, she gets it. She's seen how much scrutiny I'm under every day, how much should I deal with. So she always makes sure that I'm, I'm good. And that's, I've never really had that before, to be honest. You know, I feel like no matter if I win or lose, she's like, she understands, you know, that I'm really hard on myself, but. You know, I've, I've, I was pretty good before I met her too. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But at the same time, like, she's definitely elevated my tennis, I think. But that's what you look for in a partner, I guess. I mean, because she has benefit. I mean, she's, I don't know if you know this, she is top 10 <laughs> top most 10. influential females in Australia. So, Thanks. I mean, that's it's a great accolade. Yeah, she was also, I think, a top top 100 on, um, you know, one of the hottest in Australia, as in, in terms yeah, of, easy. in terms of, look, <laughs> no, no, I was just saying, it was, I think no. it was a certain magazine. Yeah, she's a so weapon. She, she's, <laughs> she's almost grown a massive social media presence now. How, yeah. how is that? been impacted how has she been impacted by that because i mean when you're playing whether it's in at wimbledon yep. whether it's you US. know in the u.s yep. cameras go to her now yep. you know what i mean how, how has, has she kind of learned to navigate through that um yeah look she's she's dealing with it i mean her life's been you know flipped upside down since um you know we've started dating we had current affair outside of her mum's apartment in zetland you know following us around like it's it's a hard lifestyle you know to, you know I, I told her i was like look your life's going to change drastically she didn't quite understand to what extent you know we're in tokyo i was playing in tokyo 100 fans lining up to take a photo with her whilst mm -hmm. i'm playing like so her her global kind of platform's growing but you know i see my future with her and i just see like she's making some good money now so it's all it's all good you know we definitely bounce off each other and she's like influenced your tennis as well like i know you said like you haven't played the french open in i don't know how many years yeah. and you're like yeah constantly wants to see france so i'm yeah. gonna go play the french open which i find hilarious yeah look i i don't like france to be honest <laughs> 
Yeah, right. neither, neither do I. Yeah, like, I think it's overrated. And the French Open's by far the worst the Grand Slam. Like, I've said it before, and I think a lot of players would agree with me as well. But, you know, it's good. Like, if you're in love and you're going to go see Paris... Go to City of Love. Yeah, exactly. Like, we may as well just go there and, and see it. But, yeah, look, man, it's, it's, been, it's, been, it's been a hell of a ride so far. One of the clips that went viral yeah. was when you're at Wimbledon and you got Rafa Nadal, he's in the zone, yeah. training across the court, <laughs> yeah. preparing for a massive game. And then you got you on the court next to so just giving softball serves to Costain. <laughs> Is that, do you prefer a more relaxed approach? Because you've played a lot of big games. Do you prefer a more relaxed approach like that when you're in the, in the spotlight and big games are being played? Um, yeah, I mean, that's just me. Yeah, I think I'll, you look at someone like Rafa and you look at his career compared to mine. You know, he's achieved 100 times what I've achieved and he's still, every practice session is so in intense he's got so much intent behind what he's doing he's trying to improve trying to prepare where in that moment i'm like you like i'm with cos like in wimbledon like we, i don't know how many times i'm gonna be back here again so i'll just have a hit with her like two courts down and it was pretty funny because that's <laughs> like two completely different personalities but two you know guys that have you know kind of made it to the top and i think that's like a strong message for the youth like i feel like people are just taught you have to do it this way to get there where like my way's been i mean you guys you know met me for a day and you know that i've already go about it in a completely way you different want. way. Exactly right. So it's like, you, you can do it in different ways, for sure. Yeah. No. And, and like in preparation for big matches, I know yeah. like you've obviously versed Federer and Nadal, and then you've obviously, like there's all the good players as well, but when you verse those, you know, yeah. big three, do you get nervous or like do you change your preparation at all? Is it just, you stay the same? You know what yeah, you need you to do? You don't have any Nadal superstitions where, you know, you're doing the sniff hair your ass. sniff your ass. No, or... not really. I just, I just go out there and I think like, look, that's where I wanted to be from a young age, like playing the best players in the world in the best stadiums in the world. You know, that's... That's what it is, and you're just making your family proud and just playing for everyone that's backing you. That's that's really it. But like, I mean, I train really hard when I when I'm out there, and I guess I just back myself. I've always had that. How's the preparation going into the Oz Open? Now, you, now I mean, like you've just got back from Dubai. How do you feel that you're going to be going in this tournament? Any any changes like your yeah. training regimen or anything? Um, like that? I mean, at this time of my career, like I'm 28, I'm probably you know getting into the later stages of my career. You know, I didn't look after my body as well as I'd like to. <laughs> You know, earlier on, a lot of abuse, like drugs, yeah, alcohol, yeah. any of that type, all that type of stuff. But um, look, you know, it's more just about maintaining staying injury free. Like I can't get in the gym and look like you boys. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to fucking move out there. But, but apparently you're not that flexible. I'm not, flexible. You're not flexible. I'm not flexible. <laughs> Great hip <laughs> range though. Um, no, no, but, um, no, I'm not flexible at all. Shocking flexibility. Can't, can't touch the toes. Can't touch the toes. Yeah, shit. We're all, we're all wearing basketball kit. No one, no one put the memo out. This just happened. It's just happened. But... Like I said earlier, you're a big basketball fan. We personally love seeing your multis on your on your Insta stories. What what do you think goes into putting out a good multi? Like, because we, we back our sports. I, it's a I, feel like, multi. I feel like I know my sports well. I'll put out I'll put them on multi on. I'll miss out by a leg. You know, some three dollar winner. Got, you know, yeah. so, so upset a team. Then I check Nick Kyrgios' Insta story and it's like, yeah, he's picked three three dollar winners in a multi. And I'm <laughs> yeah. like, fuck, how do you know? Picking an upset with the Portland Trailblazers, like you, you obviously follow it pretty regularly. Yeah, I mean, look, everyone knows I watch NBA religiously. Like it's every day, every team, like stats can tell you. But that's my sport. Like if I, if you were to tell me about NRL or anything like that, I don't really have an idea. I just love the Raiders because Canberra. Canberra, yeah. But um, and Nick Kotrick, shout out. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, like. Look, NBA, it's my life. So anyone needs some tips, just, just message oh, me. I do. I do need yeah, some. I'll, I'll hit you up. <laughs> a couple of tips. Now, with, with NBA season upon us, we're going into the final. You're a Boston Celtics fan. Massive, yeah. Tatum, MVP? MVP. Well, I think he's MVP. Best record in the league. Like, it's hard, to, it's hard to argue with the record. Like, his team's amazing as well. He's got a great team around him. But look... I don't think the NBA has ever been this deep. Jokic is insane. Luka Doncic is ridiculous. Giannis. Someone, like Donovan Mitchell had 71 points yesterday. Yeah. Giannis, like the league is, athletes just in general are just, oof, it's pretty insane. I mean, I think it's, yeah, it's the most competitive league it's been like in 20 years. It's like the, the, the space between the eighth spot and the sixth like spot. one game. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's real close. Is the East still considered? No, nah. nah. I don't think I think, so. think it's pretty even now. I think it's pretty even. What and like, in terms, yeah, in terms of like, you know, favourites to win the championship. I think East has more teams that are more likely Definitely. to win it. Yeah, yeah. Brooklyn, yeah. Uh, Milwaukee, and Boston. And yeah. there's, there's the are, at this point, there's less super teams in the NBA now. I feel like every team's a super team. Yeah, yeah. Every, every team's yeah, a super team. There's, there's, there's more talent. talent. Yeah. But, like, who do you think? Obviously, Boston, you're probably going to tip to win the championship. It's still very early. Yeah, I think Boston, look, it, this, this, this way through, I'd say Boston probably have the best chance. I mean, Brooklyn are scary right now. They've, they've seemed to figure it out down there. It's good to see Simmons actually 
playing without all the noise, you know, the negativity. He was dealing with a fucking shitload, you know, last couple months. To so see, mm. see, Aussie's killing it, like, right now, is, is, it's good to see. He's picked back up quietly. No one talks about it, but I don't No one like talks about it. it. Yeah, yeah. I've noticed how the media don't say anything about it now when they're on a 14-game yeah. winning streak. Yeah, and he's, like, he's, he's been one of their best defenders. Just solid, bro. He's their, he's their yeah. lead defender. He t- t- takes the ball up the court. Yep. Yes, okay, maybe he doesn't shoot threes, but that's but not I his think role. You've kind of said it before. If you want the media to quiet it down or not, not get onto you, just win. You just play, like, exactly. Just play. It solves everything. It solves everything. But I want to ask you, you, you're obviously trying to focus. You, you, you've said it in the past that so you've got maybe three like, of your best years ahead of you in tennis yep. um, before you, know, you either want to look at, look at start and retire or um, you know, I've been at the top of your game. Do you, do you see yourself venturing out into other avenues outside of tennis, whether it be business, um, hobbies that you like. I mean, you, I've, we've been getting around alive. Mate, a very nice, very nice carbonated drink. Lemon yeah. lime, bitter. lemon lime, yes, bit of flavour. Yeah. Get onto it. But yeah, how do you how are you starting to navigate life post tennis? Yeah, I mean, look, I'm I'm busy, like really busy with business stuff right now. That's where most of my emotional energy goes to. You know, I train on court and I play, but you know, I'm having a lot of business meetings. I got a lot of people around me, just keep me, you know, in the loop with how things are going. So. Look, I always told myself I didn't want to play past 30. I felt like I wanted to have a kid by then for sure. And, you know, like my body is sore. Every time I wake up, like I'm in some serious pain. So I want to be able to walk when I have kids. Like I want to be able to play and be active. Yeah. So look, I say three years, but it could be it could be two. You know, if I win a Grand Slam, it, it could be just straight away retirement. Yeah, you've said so, that. Because, yeah, speaking on that, I think it was before Wimbledon, you said, if I win a Grand Slam, I'm probably just going to retire. Because, like, what else that. What else is there left to achieve? Yeah. Is it, you're still holding to that? Yeah, I, I definitely. If I won a single Grand Slam, I'd probably retire, yeah. On the spot, like you know, Michael Jordan, yeah, fairy tale finish, go win a grand top. slam, and propose to Costine on the court. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> I mean, there's no chance she could say no. I don't think so. Does she look? We're we're from the area. We're in Sydney. Does she have any single Lebanese friends by any chance? Think? There is one. <laughs> is it? Um, you know, she's can you, she's can a you dominant put, and rough for you. I think like you're gonna have to work pretty hard. Can you put a good wording for me? Yeah, I will. I is promise it? you. I'll go. Okay. Okay. Got you. Set, up, set up actually, a double date. Come to think about it, you guys, it's good. It's a good match. It's a good match. Good match. I'll have to follow you up on that. Uh, I've seen on your Instagram recently, you know, you work a little bit hand in hand. You have the same, your agent is the same, or manager, sorry, is the same as Naomi Osaka. Yep. You've got this pickleball event coming up in Miami. Yep. What, 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 is, what is that? Because I've, I've kind of, I've seen a few big names on the cards. Gary yep. V's been in the comments. Yep. Can you talk us through that? Yeah, well, pickleball is massive in the States. It's huge. And they've got a, uh, they're going to have a massive league there. And Literally, my agents came to me like, look, do you want to be, you know, one of the main investors in, in the team? And I was like, yeah, like, who are some of the other names? Like, LeBron bought his own team. Wow. Kevin Durant bought the one in um, Brooklyn. So, like, as soon as I heard names like that buying in, I just bought in and yeah. I was just like, let's do it. Um, so, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, some of my good mates, like Jack Sock, you know, he's he's trying to transition into pickleball as well. So, it's, it's a good investment. So What, what is pickleball? What, what's uh, It's like a smaller version of tennis with different like rackets almost. Like the rackets are like paddles okay. and the ball's different. But it's huge in the States. It's, it's not the one right. that's in the, like with the walls. No, is that's, it? that's called, pa- um, it's called paddle, I think. Yeah. Okay. But, um, Can you be acing people in pickleball? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like John Isner serves insane, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. there you but go. But it's good. It's, it's blowing up. But as soon as I heard LeBron and KD in it, I was like, You're yeah, jumping on yeah, that. I'm jumping in there. Oh, and, and you've been on tour this past year. Where... Have you enjoyed playing tennis the most? Look, I've travelled around the world. I think Australia's the best place in the world, hands down. Um, in terms of just livability? Just livability, or? like food, I think cafes, coffee's insane. Um, you know, safety as well. You know, with, with everywhere in the world right now, it's, it's a scary place. You know, the States, you know, I love the States. Obviously, the basketball lifestyle. MB, MB, sports is just better there. Yeah, they yeah. know how to do sports there. But look, I'd, I'd probably say, I mean... Bahamas is pretty nice. Yeah. <laughs> Tax free. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Tax free. Really yeah. nice. We caught some vision of you last year, I believe. Yeah, we're in 2023 yeah. now, but court side, NBA. Was it a LeBron game? Yeah, we watched uh, the Lakers versus Golden State court side. We actually met I met I met Mav Carter, LeBron's agent, through yeah. my agent, and we got those seats and Costine. She would have been freaking out. She had no idea. That's <laughs> no, <laughs> no, she that's genuinely bad. had no idea how good those seats were. Like Jeez. LeBron, I mean, Westbrook like rolled the ball to her. And she was just on her phone and then just like rolled it back. I was no. like, bro, he, like, he didn't spray her? <laughs> <laughs> he, he does that, I don't know. No, I mean, he's, he, she's not yelling out, you know. But, brick, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. West Brick. But like West those brick. seats were like, you know, 30, 40 grand in the finals. And she's just sitting Shit. there in her first ever NBA game. That's mad. And she just... You got some good Insta gotta, stories we, from we gotta, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a tickle of Yeah, he dapped me up. I dropped my phone too. <laughs> yeah. He was well, a big human. What's... Are you look, do you look past tournaments? Like... 
or do you zone in on, say you've got Oz Open coming up, Are you? do you look ahead or do you just zone in on what you've got coming up? Like, you probably have a lot on your plate whether you want to go go hard on singles and you want yep. to defend doubles. How far ahead do you look in terms of tournaments? Honestly, I don't even, I'm not even thinking about AO at all. Like, I was the type of person who thought like a three month schedule was good, but I just go day, day by day, honestly. I wake up every day, just try and do, you know, the right thing. And then just, when I come there, I just deal with it. Like, there's just too much stress, too much pressure to be thinking, you know, too far ahead with anything, especially in tennis where, you know, an injury can happen. You know, I could go on, out on court today, get injured and not even get to the AO. So, just take care of every day. I was, I was wondering as well, like, with the AO, you got to play singles and doubles. I've always wondered how a player kind of manages that in terms of, especially like, you know, on your knees, on your body. Yep. Like, is it hard? And you're like, when do you decide like, okay, I don't want to play doubles. I just got to focus on singles. Or is it just strictly because you're defending your title you want to do both again? Yeah, look, I'm definitely a singles player, but the money in doubles is pretty good. Like me and Thanasi, I think won about 400 grand each from winning doubles, you know, last year, which That's is not bad good. for a bit of doubles. Um, go, straight, go straight towards the celebration. Yeah, straight to electric. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, look, for me, it's hard because, you know, I play four or five hour singles matches and then the next day is your day off. That's when you play doubles. Exactly. So it's hard. Tennis is brutal on the body, man. Like to win seven matches, potentially be out on court for four or five hours against these world class athletes. Like it's, it's pretty, it's pretty demanding. Because when I play, I mean, I sweat the house down and I probably, I probably can't run my legs a bit too thick. So I don't understand. Like when I need the day off is all I'm saying. I'd, I'd want that day off. Yeah, look, uh, there have been times where, you know, I ha I've had to pull out of doubles. Every singles player kind of has that conversation when, you know, might have a niggle in your elbow, wrist, knee. And yeah, you have that conversation. But Thanasi knows, like at Wimbledon this year, I was signed up to play doubles with him, ended up not playing just simply because I was going far in yeah. singles. And he, he understands that. You need that rest time. Definitely. There's a point in your career, you're young, 19 years old, 2014. Yeah, you well overcome the dial. No, so you had, you had that massive five set uh, win over Gasquet. Yep. Then you upset the dial. Yep. You hit that massive tweener shot. That's obviously like probably one of the best moments ever as a 19 year old. Has something in your career come close to that, or is that still the top of your career? Like, does the yeah, does that Wimbledon final top that? Especially the tennis you've been playing in the last year. Um, look, my life definitely changed. Um, yeah, I was literally like a 19-year-old kid from Canberra who had a small group of friends, and I had like people camping outside my house for three weeks, just like media, and everything just changed. My life, I can't even remember what it was like to just not feel like Nick Kyrgios, you know, just that normal kid anymore. But you know, this year was more of a consistent year, but fuck, it was stressful. Like I look back at, you know, 2022 and it was like, is it, was it worth it? It was the whole year of being yeah, on the road, sure. traveling, um, you know, putting in week, like day in, day out. Was it worth it? Cause like, I've probably never been as stressed in my life to be honest, you know, but I've had a great year. But, but is um, it, do you reckon it's just in terms of the amount of tennis that you've been playing and then everything that happened, the noise of course, outside? You know, the better, the better you do, the more people want of you as well. Like I'm definitely feeling a bit more, a bit more of a, like a slave of my success right now. Like I've got to be doing this, this, there's so many more opportunities coming. You know, it's a, it's a good problem to have. But um, yeah, I'll probably say that Wimbledon finals definitely, um, you know, it was a hell of a run. That's, that probably tops it. And do you, wait, do you double down on the, you know, if you versus anyone in that final besides Djokovic? You yeah, win? definitely. Because I thought sure. you played a perfect game. You aced him 30 times yeah. and like he's known as the best returner of all time. So yeah. like for you to do that and take a set, I thought like, you know, I think you had, you, you had about six break points that you could have won that, that could have changed the game so easily. Yeah, I definitely feel anyone else but Djokovic, I probably would have won it. But I wouldn't be doing this potty right now. I'd still be probably partying. <laughs> You'd be retired. You'd be retired. I'd be retired. I've been a wife beater, like overweight, <laughs> just chilling. Well, we, we just kind of touched on this before, but I mean, you're a competitor on the court. Mm. You know, there's always vision. Of you scream at the box. You kind of you're zoning on the court. There's has that been like hard to, especially with, you know, with your misses, to differentiate the competitor of yourself and then you off court. It's pretty easy when you're getting 20k gifts for her. Off the yeah, court. I mean, yeah, that, that definitely helps. Like, yeah. um, but no, nah, no, nah, for sure. Like you know, my team. I have a real small team. You know, my my agent horse. He's been my best friend for you know friends in school. Um, Will Will, the, my physio, has been with me for like nine years. And everyone in that box knows that I'll do anything for them on the court. I mean, on the court, off the court. You know, I try and help them out with whatever they need. Um, that's just how I am, though. That's just my outlet for pressure as well. You know, there's a couple players like that. Andy Murray does it too to his box to his mum. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, look, it's just something that I feel in that moment, I'll look around and everyone's foreign apart from those four people. So they just cop it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I get off the court and I'm like, look, like, you know, we, we, we lose together, we win together. That's just that team environment. And mm. they know that 
you know, when I'm out there, what I'm saying half the time is just doesn't make sense. Like I'm talking to myself saying the most ridiculous things. Yeah. But you know, when I get off, it's all good. And you've got this Netflix documentary coming up. I think it's going to be massive. It's called Breakpoint. Can you talk us through the filming of that? So what, it was a camera that followed you around for pretty much 12 months on tour. Yeah, whole season. A whole season. Yeah. Was that like a, like a Kanye, you know, camera on you documentary the whole time through travel, through everything? Yeah. Or, yeah, talk us through a bit of that. So, yeah, they basically just picked five, I think five or six male players to follow around week in, week out, you know, in the locker room. Some of, they came to my house in Canberra. They filmed, you know, my mum cooking, you know, my upbringing. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's more a documentary to get tennis back on the map globally. You know, you're obviously seeing Federer retire and once these bigger guys kind of go, tennis, you know, is trying to find its identity again. It's missing some characters. Exactly right. So, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be good. But yeah, they followed us a year, year round and it's wow. probably the best year of my career. So I was pretty lucky. <laughs> yeah, perfect timing. Yeah. Perfect timing. Did, did you play well because they were filming? <laughs> but honestly, like people are like, you, you definitely tried harder. You I was like, on. I'm not thinking about that when I'm fucking playing. Yeah. Well, I'm, like, I'm saying it's like a basketball player, you know, when it's their contract season, they kind of elevate their place. Exactly. So they right. get yeah. a contract. I'm saying that now, but I probably did. <laughs> you turned up for Netflix. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. the Netflix money. No, nah, no, nah, good man. Well, I want to hit you with some quick fire questions. We do this with every guest. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's called fill in the blanks. So I'm going to start with blank is the most. And then you you got to give me the answer, okay? okay? Or blank, who who is this? Or blank is this? And then you give us the answer, okay. okay? So right now, blank is the best female tennis player in the world. I'd say Iga Swiatek. Yeah, yeah she's by far. I mean, I watched her in Dubai um, recently. She's just she seems to be like a class above, you know, anyone right now. Um, but, you know, the women's game is definitely, there's a lot of more young, exciting players coming through as well, which is good. But, yeah, she's, she's probably got... Because she, she won US Open, French Open. Oh, she won like 70 matches yeah, this year or yeah. something ridiculous. She probably, is, she got unlucky in Wimbledon. Yeah. But, you know. 30-match 30, 30 win streak or something ridiculous. So. We kind of did touch on this, but blank has been the best moment of your career so far. Um, best moment of my career. On uh, or off the court? Look, the Wimbledon final was amazing, but I'd probably say the Grand Slam with Tanasi was probably the you know, the best moment because someone's so close to me that we've literally done it all together. It's like, I feel like when we're old, that's something that we're going to have like, you know, a ciggy and a coffee over like when we're old, when we're old Greeks just at the table, you know, that's something that's never going to die. I'll stick with you forever. Exactly. That's mad. Okay, blank is the goat of basketball. Either LeBron uh, or Jordan look, debate. Look, LeBron for me is the goat. Um, I think what he's about to do this season as well, you know, the scoring, to this, you know, first. Year 20. Yeah, year 20. Some of the things he's doing this year is ridiculous anyway. He's had like, Three 40 point games in a row at 38. He's carrying the Lakers. Stupid, so. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, I would say it, bro. And this is another one that I think is heavily debated, and you've kind of weighed in on it in the past, but blank is the goat of tennis. Um, I think when it's all said and done, Novak will be the goat, but I think Federer for me is like, without Federer, there's no Nadal, no Djokovic. Like, Federer, you know, he's the fan base is like, he brought so many fans to tennis. I think he's done the most stuff off the court for like underprivileged kids, any of that stuff. So look, it's hard. I think you definitely got to take all that into consideration. That's why I'd say LeBron as well. Like yeah. LeBron is crazy with how much he does outside of basketball, but I'd say- Opening I'd, schools. Exactly yeah. right. Like I'd probably say Novak when it's all said and done. Yeah, I, I, I'd agree with that. Yeah. You know, I mean, everyone respects Fed, but everyone's kind of, I mean, he's chasing now. He's yeah. kind of buying Like them. if it's just purely tennis related, I'd say, Novak yeah. but if it's just like as a general like maybe you know more than an athlete I'd say Federer because you've said previously I want to actually get the quote up it says uh, in my opinion I believe Roger's the greatest of all time his skill set the way he plays the game it's pure talent wise just purely based on talent the way he plays he's like he's the goat yeah Roger's chopped me a couple of times like he makes you feel bad at tennis yeah. like <laughs> can you like elaborate on that because like I know Djokovic like and Nadal they're just grinders yeah but then like Federer he's so much more skillful like how did he make you feel bad at tennis well, I feel like, yeah, as you said, Rafa and Novak, they kind of let you work into the match a little bit more with, you, with your ground strikes. But Federer can just make you feel purely like shit. Like, he can, he makes, it feel, makes the court feel so small. Like, it feels like I can't make a ball. And the way he's walking around, and he, you're never a favourite against him, wherever you are. In Australia, overseas, I played him in Miami, Stuttgart. He's, got the, he's the hometown favourite everywhere you go, and that's so fucking annoying. <laughs> yeah, no, I, get that, so, yeah. I mean... Mate, I want to say thank you for jumping on the pod. Cool. It's been it's been great to have you on. I said like not every day you get to speak to someone as influential as you in the world. You know, your world renowned tennis player. Do you want to say anything to? I mean, a lot of Australians that 
we'll be getting behind you. This Oz Open, you know, like a prediction of how you're going to go, whether with whether it's in the, with the nasty in, in, in doubles or how you're going to go with singles. No, all I would say is like, I mean, look, I'm definitely going to bring energy, regardless, you know, win or lose, you know, in singles or doubles. You know, I'm looking forward to the doubles for sure. Having that in the back in the back of my mind, you know, regardless what happens in singles, I've got that with Thanasi, but it's going to be a good one. You know, I think the a lot more expectation on me this time around, so it's going to be hard going into the Australian Open as probably one of the favourites now, and you know, I'm going to have to just internalise that and, and just use it as fuel. So, you know, the energy's got to be there. I mean, yeah, we're, we're going to be down in Melbourne, so I mean, we're going to catch a couple of singles and doubles games. So. Yeah, hundred percent. Best of luck. If, if you'll probably spray us because we'll get to, we'll get up to something in the crowd. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you need to vent at someone and you need some yeah. pressure off the box, we'll take. Look at us. I'll, I'll, I'll move this straight. <laughs> <laughs> no, appreciate it, brother. Of Thank course. you. For take it on. easy, fellas. Thank you.